Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a problem patient or client and you want help, 844-236-6010 is our number. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business, and of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase longevity products, you can go over to, uh, head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We have blog posts, news stories on both uh, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth 5% Retinol Gel, the ultimate connective tissue building topical skin care product made with the ultimate, the two ultimate connective tissue building active ingredients, vitamin C and vitamin A. We've been talking about connective tissue for a few weeks now, and we will continue talking about connective tissue for good reason. That's because the connective tissue is the site of much of our health misery. Connective tissue diseases like arthritis, Marfan syndrome, Sjogren's disease, lupus, these get all the press. But Alzheimer's is a connective tissue problem. Nobody talks about that. Parkinson's is a connective tissue problem. In fact, if you have a brain issue, more than likely, if it's not a mechanical type issue, if it's a long-term degenerative type issue like a movement disorder or a dementia, the chances are pretty darn good you're dealing with a connective tissue problem because the brain is 90% connective tissue. Nobody talks about that. Connective tissue issues affect the heart. Sclerosis, atherosclerosis, leading cause of heart disease is a connective tissue problem. It's a a, a sign that your connective tissue and your blood vessels are breaking down. Sjogren's syndrome, uh, a connective t- autoimmune connective tissue disease, rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune connective tissue disease, prolapse is connective tissue, hernia is connective tissue, bulging discs and disc disease and scoliosis and osteoporosis, connective tissue diseases. Aging, the visible signs of aging, connective tissue. Anytime you hear the word sclerosis or fibrosis, connective tissue. Even cancer may have a connective tissue link. Yesterday we talked about the function of a special type of connective tissue that acts as a protector against cancer. It's called amyloid. If you're dealing with Alzheimer's or you study Alzheimer's or or you've done research on Alzheimer's, you know about amyloid because amyloid is being blamed for Alzheimer's. But it turns out that people who have Alzheimer's don't get cancer. Reading from uh, the journal Current Alzheimer's Research, quote, this is the headline, a common biological mechanism in cancer and Alzheimer's disease, unquote. Quote, cancer is not a common finding among residents who are demented, unquote. Cancer is, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease antagonizes cancer. This makes you wonder, could it be that amyloids and fibrosis are really protective mechanisms? That's a very good, uh, there's a very good chance that we, what we call dysfunction and disease is really the body attempting to protect itself. 
There may be a reason for this uncontrolled tissue growth that is the hallmark of sclerosis and fibrosis and many of our connective tissue health problems. Research is actually pointing to a functional and protective reason for these, the formation of these fibers and excessive secretion of these fibers. The body's protecting itself. It's in a defensive posture. The idea is not to shut down the fibrosis. It's to figure out why it's there. Something's activating the emergency response, and you guys, that is the common theme of degenerative disease, period. Simplified. Health is simple. Understanding disease does not require specialists and medical, uh, medical professionals and an eight-year medical degree unless you want to go into classifying things. Medicine loves to classify, diagnose, name. And maybe, maybe uh, uh, 500 years ago when, when we were, the Enlightenment was beginning, when the Renaissance was beginning, we were just starting to understand the body. Maybe 500 years ago it was functional to classify these things because before then they just said it was an act of God. Or little elves shot arrows at you. So I can see why medicine may need to classify things. And it is interesting, actually. I study this stuff. It's very interesting. But from a healing and reversal perspective, it doesn't matter. You want to look for the, the simple common threads that underlie everything. That's just a general rule of troubleshooting. Look for, if you have multiple problems, look for common threads. If you can find common threads, you can achieve, you can, you can uh, get results at all of the multiple levels. If you can find the root, you can take care of all of the leaves. And that's basically what we're talking about. Connective tissue diseases can be classified into hundreds. But that doesn't help you from a reversal perspective. Witness the utter failure of the medical model when it comes to dealing with these things. Here's the thing about connective tissue. Oh, by the way, do you know estrogen, which is a stress hormone, is also pro-fibrotic and pro-sclerotic? And estrogen is another common, un, a common denominator theme that underlies excess estrogen, the wrong kind of estrogen. But I digress. Here's the thing about connective tissue. Even though it appears like the gums and the bone and the blood vessel and the brain and the skin and the digestive tract are all separate components in the body, they are not. They're woven together. They're linked together via connective tissue. And if we look at the body as being composed of all of these separate parts and organs and structures, we will be stuck going to the doctor. We will be helpless. We will think we are our diagnosis. We will now have a diagnosis and a protocol, and maybe we can wear a T-shirt and a, and a baseball hat that says, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and we can have a brand and an identity, and that's really what happens here, you guys, is we get branded, and we form an identity around our disease and our diagnosis, and we get a T-shirt, but it doesn't help us get better. We just think we have this thing. And then you got this ridiculous idea of it's in your genes and it's hereditary and my mother had it and my father had it and we get stuck and we don't get better. And nobody's telling us this because our so-called experts don't know it. What you're hearing here on this program, if you understand what, you, what I've just said in the last 10 minutes, you know more than your doctor about how this whole thing works. Your medical professionals, they're not trained this way. They're trained in diagnosis. And then they go to the little book, and then they see what kind of pills you get for your diagnosis or what kind of surgical procedure you do for that diagnosis. And then you get plugged into the computer. You have a special code, and then the insurance company knows, and then they'll pay for this drug but not for that drug, the surgical procedure but not for that surgical procedure. It's not to get us better. It's so the system can run. It's like skincare. How I always say in skincare, all the ingredients in skincare are not to make your skin better. They're so you can sell you the product. We've developed a structure, that, uh, an institution of medicine that it cares more about itself than it does about what it's supposed to be doing. It cares more about keeping itself in the game so that n nobody kills the goose that laid the golden egg so that the, the pipeline of money keeps flowing and nobody gets better. And you know what? They're not going to get better and probably... I, you know, I don't want to go all conspiracy theory, but maybe they're not supposed to get better. Maybe we're not supposed to get better so we can remain wards of the medical model until we drop dead. But it doesn't matter, you guys, because we can do this ourselves. And that's the good news. That's the bright side. If you understand it's all a connective tissue problem here, the good news here is you work on your connective tissue, everything gets better. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 
Six eight four eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're going to get your calls in this segment. We'll continue talking about connective tissue and fibrosis, and we're going to uh, get into some skin stuff here because the skin is ninety percent connective tissue. And if you've got crepey skin or wrinkles or fine lines or crow's feet, you got a connective tissue problem. You got osteoporosis of the skin. Put it that way. Uh, but we got a, uh, a really cool guest coming on at the bottom of the hour, Jill Hewlett. She's a, a brain fitness expert, wellness authority. She's an author, a public speaker. She's had a television show up. She's Canadian and had a television show up in Canada. Uh, she uh, has got some really interesting things to say about keeping your brain healthy and the relationship between physical movement and the brain. Uh, she's got a blog and newsletter, and I'm excited to talk to Jill, who I've gotten to know over the last few months. Uh, we'll talk to her at the bottom of the hour, and then we'll get to your phone calls here in this segment. We will continue talking about connective tissue building strategies and how to deal with connective tissue health challenges tomorrow. On the Bright Side, let's go to St. Louis and welcome Sandy to the Bright Side. What's up, Sandy? Hi there, Ben. Thanks for hey. taking my call. First of yes. all, well, I do have a testimony about, okay. well, might as well go into that, but I do have some questions, but I love, love, love your Truth products. Oh, thank you. Um, Which I, ones are you um, using? Are you, is using this Sandy? A for about four months, my large liver spots have totally disappeared on my face. Oh, that's my awesome. My husband has noticed that, and um, he's Well, not, hang on, Sandy, Sandy. You said the Truth Retinol 5% gel, right? Yes, the Truth and, Retinol and, A 5% okay. gel. Okay, and it, uh, oh, your liver that, spots are gone. Oh. I mean, is it, is it, I, I'm talking, it is a Retinol-A product. Yes, it's uh, Retinol. 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 Yes, okay. you're combined. Retin-A is a prescription product. Retinol, okay. true 5% Retinol gel is my over-the-counter version of yeah. uh, Retin-A. And I'll, uh, go ahead, tell me what else we were saying. I'll get into that so, in a sec. But... So my husband's noticed that, and now he's using it on a few, spa uh, few places on his face. Nice. Too. So, nice. And it is really nice. So he's noticing a difference. Very um, good. No well, irritation or anything like that? You didn't have any irritation or any, like... None. Mm -hmm. and is that amazing? Retin-A is very irritating, by the I way, the prescription. I'm sorry? The prescription version is very irritating, and I made my Truth Retinol 5% gel to be the same potency without the irritation. It's amazing. And well, thank you. And then I hear from other callers saying, well, I use it every day, and you're saying, well, I don't really, really, uh, you know. I, so I really want to know exactly because I've been, how to use it because I, I put it on my spots, and then I will use the um, other cream. It's not a cream. It's the, the other ball. gel. Um, Truth over ball. It to, so that I don't have any problems. But I've never you... had any problems. So Okay. I, I guess I just want to know then. How, okay, let me answer that. That's a great question, all right? I don't suggest people use it every day for a couple of reasons. Yes. Number one, because if not everybody can use it every day because it's retinol and it's like putting your foot on the gas of metabolism, of, of production. That's how retinol, one of retinol's major functions is to put the, your foot on the gas for, to uh, stimulate production from the fibroblasts of collagen and connective tissue. It will also have an effect on the surface of the skin and not everybody is healthy enough to, their skin is not healthy enough to use it every day. You obviously have healthy, strong skin. If you're, if you're deficient in essential fatty acids, you're having fat digestion problems, you, your skin may be sensitive and everybody out there should understand if you have sensitive skin it's not the skin's fault it has to do with biochemicals particularly fatty ones that are not being produced uh, efficiently or raw materials are not getting into the system so if you have sensitive skin start using your ultimate EFAs and correct fat metabolism issues now if you don't have sensitive skin Sandy your your point is well taken some people do use it every day I suggest you skip days if you have sensitive skin but also you want to mix things up a little bit with the skin First, you want to give the skin rest periods. That's number one. And you're giving it a rest period between days. So that might be enough of a rest period for you. And then you want to mix things up. You want the skin guessing at when the nutrients are coming in. If it comes in every day, the skin gets complacent, just like we do. Organs okay. get complacent. So you want to mix it up a little bit. Mix, skip a day here or there. That's my recommendation to you. Okay. And then um, and with I, since they're gone, since my <laughs> dark liver spot. Gone, you know, I don't really need to put it up to just kind of do it for insurance. Well, there's I more though, Sandy. It's a, it'll keep wrinkles away, it'll have anti wrinkle properties. So, and if you have fine lines and wrinkles and crow's feet, it'll help them reverse literally reverse. So but if, if you don't, they'll put and my skin is um really is amazing at 71. Wow, 
That's yeah. awesome, Sandy. That's you know. a great testimonial. And I put on a little bit of powder before I go out, and I was able to to give this testimonial <laughs> when I did the survey also, because I did do the survey. Um, and the way I wanted to say something, that the way that you handled that survey allowed me to participate because an appointment was set up. And, um, you know, because I just don't do surveys. So I uh, thank you for hand for such a thank you class act survey. Oh, okay. I love it. I, for the listeners, uh, we were do, we did a survey for, uh, for truth, uh, custom, truth customers to just find out what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and what we could do better for you. And Sandy was a participant in the survey, and I do appreciate it very much, Sandy. And if you're interested, if you, if you use truth treatment products and you're interested in participating in a survey, send us a note, uh, truth.treatments at gmail.com. Hey, Sandy, do you have a question? I'm, I'm out of, uh, I'm running out of time here. I got a guess. <laughs> First of all, I want to know the uh, vitamin A that I can take. I take the BTT products. I take the EFAs. I take all of that. And um, so the, I'd like to know an, an additional vitamin A that would be absorbable that I, can, that I can add to the BTT. And then the K2, I don't know that the K2 is in BTT. So is there, a, you yeah, know. You want, a, so you, want extra K, you do want extra K2 and extra vitamin A, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Vitamin A, uh, fish oil, you can either get straight fish oil, and that has vitamin A in it. You can also use uh, capsules, which come from fish oil, typically. There's no vitamin A in plants, by the way. Just let's okay. be clear about that. So oil. you got to get into, if you're vegan, you can use beta carotene, but it's not vitamin A. All right? Let's be just very clear. If you're vegan, you're missing vitamin A. Uh, so anyway, uh, 20,000 IU, it's going to come, you get fish oil, uh, you get capsules that are derived from fish oil. 20,000 IU is, is a good place to be. Food vitamin A, though, is always going to be your best. And that's going to be uh, a fatty fish is probably the best source of vitamin A. There might be a little bit of mushrooms, actually, which are a cross between plant and animal, as we've said. Um, and then um, organ meats are also, liver particularly, is also a good source of vitamin A. But should the fish oil be in a nitrogen base? Uh, you know, they keep them pretty, they're in gel caps. They're not usually packed in nitrogen because they're in gel caps. The bottle may be packed in nitrogen, but the capsule itself is in a gel cap, and that protects the vitamin A. Okay. Then I sent you an email for the ketogenic video. I haven't gotten that. I guess oh, okay. Only... I'm behind. I, I apologize. I know. I, I, I guess I'm just behind on my emails. I will I get that out to you, guaranteed. You're... One more question. There are so many here, but the eggs. I hear that there's so many um, extra um, omega sixes in eggs, and I eat, we eat a lot of eggs, eggs now. Uh, okay, let's talk about eggs real quick. Eggs are an amazing, amazing source of vitamin A too. I forgot to mention that. Also. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. You want to make sure the chickens are fed correctly. Meat. Chickens eat meat. They don't eat, well, they'll eat some grain, but they prefer worms. So you got to make sure they're like free range or they're not being fed a vegetarian diet. You know, you, they got to have the meat in order to get uh, the right balance of omega-6s okay. to omega-3s. Um, and then also, uh, uh, well, you, they're also, they're going to be, they'll, you'll get some omega-3s in uh, if they're fed the correct grains, but most chickens today aren't. So you got to look for uh, you got to look for an egg that's natural that's not being fed uh, that's not like a factory farmed egg kind of thing free range etc thank you thank you thank you thank you gotta go i'm sorry sandy thanks for the kind words about the truth i appreciate it truth.treatments.com send us an email or go to www.truthtreatments.com got jill hewlett coming up next thank okay we are back on the bright side pharmacist ben here we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. And, of course, you can always check out our archive page at brightsideben.com. Uh, We've got five-plus years of archives at brightsideben.com and a lot of good free health information, the kind of stuff you're not going to get from any other radio program. That's why we're here, folks, helping clear up this crazy world of nutritional supplementation. Check out brightsideben.com. You can also go to criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. Got blog posts and news stories, and you can purchase longevity products off of any of the websites, and especially join, think about joining, or join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can help spread the word and help me in my mission to educate the world about the importance and power of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, I'm really excited to have our next guest on. Jill Hewlett is a brain fitness expert. She's an author. She's, uh, she's got a really cool newsletter, and uh, she's got a very fascinating take on how you can basically get smarter. I think I said that right. 
What's up, Jill? Did I do that? Did I do that well? Did I did you I miss did. anything? Great intro, Ben. Thank, Thank you. For you. Having me on your show, I've been looking forward to it. So you have a, well, there's so many cool things that you do, and I'm a big fan, as you know. But you. most especially, I'm fascinated with this very interesting and innovative and unique take on uh, the relationship between movement and the body, as uh, the physical body and brain health. Uh, can you elaborate mm-hmm. on that for us? I'd love to. I'd love to. And that is the cornerstone of my brain fitness programs, actually. So. Mm-hmm. You started at an excellent place. Um, I will mention for listeners, you know, in case they haven't heard of the concept, that brain fitness is about creating a fit brain. And inevitably, because the things that we need to do to create a fit brain are so important for our entire system, our body, our physical health, our emotional health, our mental health, and our overall functional health, that in the process of creating a fit brain, we actually create a fit life. So it's like a circle. It's like a yeah, circle, yeah. A, a fit brain, yeah, kind of, fit body, fit bo- brain, fit body, kind of, they feed on each other. Is that right? Absolutely. Well, I like to say to people, you can use the body you currently have to get the brain you ultimately want to create. And that's pretty powerful because I think a lot of people don't connect to their ability to affect their own cognition. I think people do understand that they can be healthier and have more energy and ward off disease with proper supplementation and eating healthy foods. I don't think they really connect with um, the, how that immediately actually affects our neurological system and our brain health as well, and how that translates then into everyday applications, like the choices we make, the perspectives we have, um, the, the ability to focus on tasks, the ability to be creative and innovative, problem solve, and um, communicate we, more effectively. We, um, Jill, like we especially translate so this inner uh, growth and development uh, physically and mentally translates into our entire life experience. And we especially don't realize that just by doing work with our physical bodies, we can create a change that way. We can improve the choices we make. I love how you said that about the choices we make because how many times do we make poor choices and it affects our lives because of cognition issues and we can actually move our bodies physically to create better choices, correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I like to say to people, you, you are actually, I used to say you can become your own neuroplastician, um, but now I say you are actually because in every action you take, every thought you have, the environment you're in is either shrinking you or expanding you cognitively and also you know physically too relating to our immune system our overall energy levels um, everything we do is either contributing or taking away from those aspects and um, there are many core components to uh, my brain fitness program well hang on before um, you get into one- that Joe before you get into that you used a word that I, I don't think people understand what it is but it's a very important word uh, okay. and it's something that we're just understanding you know over the last 5, 10, 20 years and that's this idea of neuroplasticity so you said you could be your own neuroplastician but that's a really really important concept that I, can you before you go into some of the steps can you talk about that for a little bit yeah absolutely that's a good point I'm glad you caught me there uh, basically, it's about using, working with the plasticity of the brain because it was, you know, just in the past 20, 30 years that science has proven that our brain can change. Uh, prior to that, they thought it was hardwired and set in stone. And so it's an exciting time to be on the planet because now we recognize that we can change our brain. <laughs> and um, that means a lot of things. It, it means you can overcome trauma and injury and disease but it also means that we can affect our performance and our ability to learn new skills and just function better in day-to-day life. And um, this neuroplasticity is um, becoming more prevalent. If people look it up on the Internet and they just search for their own information, they'll find a lot now. It's becoming a really hot topic. And another word associated with neuroplasticity um, is neurogenesis, our ability to create new brain cells um, from actually from the day we're conceived till the day we die. So this is a lifelong ability that we're embedded with um, innately. And, and I think a lot of people just don't, don't know it and therefore can't capitalize on it. 
You know, we've been talking about hardening uh, on the bright side for the last month, basically, or three weeks. And what you're talking about, this neuroplasticity uh, aspect, there's an interesting relationship between getting older and the brain hardening and youthfulness and plasticity, pl a plastic nature. And we know kids learn, learn in a way better than adults do, right? They, have, they can learn languages. They can learn musical instruments. They're more responsive because their brain is more plastic. And as we get older, our brain literally, as well as metaphorically, becomes harder and this is a very important part of the aging process because we know even dementias involve a hardening of the brain in a sense, physically, not just metaphorically, but physically. There's, the brain becomes mm -hmm. more fibrotic. So this plastic nature of the brain it has a lot to do with mm -hmm. youthfulness and anti-aging as well. And I appreciate you, uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, uh, this idea of neuroplasticity, yeah. neuro, <laughs> neurological plasticity, meaning having a plastic nature. All right, so I want you to uh, talk a little bit about some of these steps that people can use. You got some really neat practical ideas. I love your practical ideas, Jill. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sure thing. If you could just give, give people some steps that they could take, and we do have just a couple minutes in this break, and then we'll continue when we come back, or before our break, and then we'll continue back uh, when we come uh, after the commercial break. So if you could just start us off with some steps, some practical kinds of things people can do. Sure, sure. And just to, just to comment on your, your last point there, there, there is a hardening. Obviously, there's an aging process that's inevitably going to occur. But by taking, doing these components that I'm going to mention, some examples of things people can do to work with their neuroplasticity and, and create a fit brain and a fit life, um, when people do that, they, they can prolong um, healthy longevity. Um, they can be younger longer, more youthful longer. Um, they can you know, keep themselves intact physically, mentally, emotionally, and functionally longer term. But there is an inevitable aging process However, I think that most people, what they want to strive for is healthy, active aging. And, you know, science has also shown that no two aging brains look alike. And I think that's very empowering information. And when people really sit with that, that statement, I think they can then recognize that there's only one person who determines their aging process. Mm, and that's, that's powerful, powerful stuff. stuff. That's powerful stuff, Jill. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we got to take a break now. So when we come back, we'll talk about some practical steps. Uh, we're talking to Jill Hewlett, practical steps for uh, improving brain fitness, especially using the physical body. That's the most fascinating aspect of Jill's work, I think. And we'll, be, uh, we'll finish up when we come back from our commercial break. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side talking to Jill Hewlett, brain fitness expert, author, wellness expert, television star, right, Jill? You had your own cable TV show there for a while. Give the right. folks your newsletter real quick before I forget because I, I don't want to miss that. Yeah, people can that. sign up for my newsletter, and there's lots of great information out there on my website at jillhewlett.com. So it's triple W, J I L L H E W L E T T dot com. And they can purchase your book off of jillhewlett.com as well. And it is a very, very inspiring and creative and fun to read book, I will say. Uh, mm, and that's thank up there you. Thank as you. Well. Called, the book is called Common Sense and Commonly Practiced, a heartfelt book to achieving personal wellness. And I thank you for your comments. I loved writing it. And it's really meant to nurture and inspire people. Cool. So uh, give us a few practical steps, how you can link moving the body to thinking better and having better mental health. Okay. So the first thing is awareness. Um, once we become aware of something, not only does that precede change, that creates change. We create new neurological connect connections, connectivity just by becoming aware of something. That is nice. an activity. Awareness is something that we can all do just by being curious about life, becoming more aware, noticing things more, noticing ourselves, our environment. Um, that's a key first step. And I could talk a lot more about these, but I know our time is short. So um, the second one is fueling ourselves properly with proper hydration. Our body and brain, the recipe of our system, is meant to be primarily water. So if we're not putting that ingredient in, we're going to be struggling. We're going to be challenged. And it's going to definitely affect our cognition. I have a saying, if you're thinking, you're drinking water. Nice. Of and then uh, what I like to add to my water, though, and add to my diet for brain fuel and body fuel are the right supplements. And I know you're big on that as well. And I'm very excited, Ben, because we're having you come to Toronto this weekend. And you're going to be doing several events and speaking about essential nutrition and um, sharing your wisdom on, on health and becoming healthy and maintaining good health. 
and uh, you've got quite a fan base, so everyone's very excited about you coming. Very to, nice. Uh, I love to Toronto. I'm yeah, excited as well. You're, you're going to see the autumn leaves and the beautiful colors coming through. Oh, I'm very excited. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking then, about nutrition at the show, and then we'll be doing two talks during the week. Exactly. And then I'm going to do some brain tune-ups before you speak. And this is the area that I think you keep referring to, is that we can use our body to stimulate our brain. And neuroscience scientists have, have said, you know, the movement is the best way to grow, stimulate, activate the brain. Love it. It elicits something called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, basically it's a brain growth protein and what this does is it um, fosters new neurons and new neurological connections you know that most of us we think about moving the body we just think about the body and it, most people re recognize that moving the body is important for physical non non-mental kinds of things but the link between physical movement and mental health and and uh, not just mental health but brain health the physiology of the brain is so fundamental and so underappreciated and under recognized what do you think about the idea of moving your body as you're learning like if you're reading a book or you're studying if you're a absolutely, student absolutely absolutely you know most people are experiential and kinesthetic learners to some degree and many are, are are primarily that and so if they have to sit still for long periods of time yeah. their brain's going to go into screensaver mode it's going to go into shutdown um you know as we move actually our oh, jill we're losing jill jill <laughs> Uh, we're losing Jill here. I'm not sure what happened to Jill Hewlett. Is she gone? I'm here. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you are. Go I'm ahead. We missed that. I missed the last the last 10 seconds or 15 seconds of what you said. Yeah. So, and you know, I, I just want to speak to that further, that some people are kinesthetic, experiential learners, and, and all of us are regardless, because we all have a body. And it's the fact that um, are, we, we have a brain, actually, because we have a body. Um, you know, if we didn't move, if we didn't uh, have a body, we wouldn't need to have a brain. It's that we move in space. We need to make choices. We need to make decisions. We need to take action. So that body-mind connection is fundamental. And if we weren't moving around in space, we really wouldn't need a, a brain. Um, mm. So they are plants don't have necessarily a brain. There, there's there's an intimate connection here, and so I don't think people recognize that. Um, you're right. They they knew they know that movement affects us physically, and um, it helps with physical health. But they don't realize that there are very strategic activities we can do, movements we can do that will um, affect and optimize how our brain functions. And it's give us give us a couple. That can be used for the classroom. There's ones that can be used for the workplace. Um, just for general everyday life management mm -hmm. and so give us a couple example, ideas jill jill give us a couple ideas like like movement types well, of movements you, can do, um, you can do something called a cross lateral mo movement so everyone most people know that walking is healthy but not everyone has time to go for a walk so and so a lot of people are sitting still at their desk for too long not just in classrooms but in workspaces they say sitting is the new cigarette you know it's, it's mm -hmm. killing people it's um, mm -hmm. it's it, it, it's taking a toll on our spine, which affects our nervous system, which affects our communication to our brain, all sorts of things that are happening there. And so if a person is noticing, or actually every, every 20 minutes to half an hour, a person should get up from being seated and do some movement. And so they can actually walk on the spot. This is a brain gym activity taken, taken from Dr. Dennison's work. And it's an exaggerated walking motion done right on the spot. And what that does is by moving the opposite hand to the opposite leg and then vice versa, going back and forth, just right on the spot, a person mm -hmm. doing that slowly 10 to 12 times, they reactivate what's called their whole brain resources. Because when wow. we sit for long periods of time, we start to, once I, like I said earlier, start to stagnate or shut down. And we move into a smaller portion of our brain, um, which, which isn't going to be useful to us or valuable to us if we want to get our work done and do it well, um, you know, work on a project, um, learn in the classroom, write a test. We need as much of our brain resources functioning 
um, so that we can you know, do our best in it and also enjoy the process too. So something as simple as moving your legs and your arms uh, and touching the opposite sides of the opposite leg with the opposite arm can activate the brain as, as I'm reading on the internet, as I'm doing my emails, as I'm doing whatever work I'm doing at my yeah, desk. Yeah, I'm moment and step from it. Okay. We're walking on treadmills ju- or riding stationary bicycles while their uh-huh. work can be very uh-huh. valuable. And I agree with that. I also believe that when you actually take a moment away from the activity and focus on your breath, focus on your movement pattern, it only takes 30 seconds to a minute. It doesn't take long that you're recharging yourself. You're taking Mm -hmm. a little brain recess or a brain spa, and then you go back to your desk and now you are revitalized. You're recharged and you're, you're, you know, you've like all cylinders are going kind of thing. And now you, um, you come back Uh with a new attitude as well. Not only can you think more clearly, you actually have a better attitude, and um, and you feel you you enjoy you, you enjoy the activity you're doing more. So give your brain some love, in other words, just like stop and give your brain <laughs> a little bit of loving. That's ba- that's what I'm hearing you, you say. Know, mm-hmm. Is that correct? Just give your brain some well, attention. There are so, so many activities that that are available to do to, to for self care. I think you're right. It's about self care. It's also about self management, and it's about stress reduction. Because when we do these things, we're actually mitigating stress. We're taking care of ourselves. I and love we're it. also being more strategic about how we live and the results we get. And in, that's available to everyone at every age. In a way, just paying attention to your brain and paying attention to your body and being aware of your brain, being aware of your body is self-love, is self-healing, it's self-nurturing. Just the act of paying attention to it. Not thinking, but paying attention to the brain, correct? I think the first, yeah, the first piece of awareness that I mentioned is huge. Is absolutely huge. You know, we are in our... Intent, what we focus on expands, right? So where we put our intention, our energy For better goes. or worse. For better or worse. Yeah, for better or for worse, absolutely. So we could be sabotaging or we could be using that strategically. So I, I agree with that. And then there's these components, these things we can do. And I have webinars on my website. Um, I think you know, it's a great place for people to get started. There are many, many activities that I teach in my training programs, and um, many of those are actually on the webinars, so people, wherever they're located on the planet, they can access it. Um, if someone wanted me to come in-house to bring in the training into a, a school setting, a workplace, mm. um, a conference, um, a wellness event, um, these are the perfect strategies because they complement um, people's everyday lifestyles, and they're easy and quick to do. So, like I said, whether you're sitting in a classroom, a workplace, or you're just wanting to get more out of your everyday um, activities, you can use these movie- movements and strategies intermittently and um, use them to your advantage. All right, Jill, we're out of time. JillHewlett.com, correct? JillHewlett.com for more information. That's right. You got it. Okay, good to talk to you, and we'll see you uh, in Toronto this weekend. I'm very excited, and thanks for coming on the Bright Side, Jill. Have an awesome, beautiful day. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Check out my True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off of brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Have yourselves a beautiful day, folks. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now. 